Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Well, good morning and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. It's great to have you with us today. My name is Michael Cromwell and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. And it's my joy to, uh, to be able to share with you this morning. So let's pray together. God, we thank you for the gift of this day and the gift of your love. In this moment, at this time, I pray for more of you and for less of me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, today is the first Sunday in Lent. So with that said, I have good news and I have bad news for you. Uh, I'm going to share the bad news with you first. Uh, now I'm going to say it and you're not going to like it. Are you ready? You are a sinner. And so am I. I know it's a really great way to start a sermon isn't it? By declaring that we are all sinners. Now, before I go all Jonathan Edwards and preach a sinners in the hand of an angry God sermon, there's good news as well. And I'll get to that here in just a moment. I saw a pastor one time greet his congregation and he stood in front and he said, good morning, saints. And everybody erupted, good morning, pastor. And then he followed that and he said, good morning, sinners. There was only crickets responding. People didn't know how to respond to that statement. Well, you see, Lent is a season in the church where we examine ourselves, knowing that we are sinful and we are broken people in need of a Savior. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I don't like to talk about my sins. And I don't like to talk about the fact that I'm a broken person. Do you? I mean, you don't have to scroll far in social media or listen in uh, to various conversations to realize that we tend to put our best selves forward. We don't, we don't want people to know that, that, that we're sinful and, and that we're broken. I mean, when was the last time that you saw someone post or, or share with somebody else about how sinful of a person they were and all the, the things that they had done wrong? We like to hide that part of ourselves. Well, during the season of Lent, we have the unique opportunity to to be honest with ourselves, and to be honest with God. One of the biggest things that we learn in the season of Lent is that we cannot save ourselves, no matter how hard we try. But here's the good news. We need a Savior to make us right and to make us whole with God again. And God heard our cry and our request and, and answered us in the person, in the ministry, and the sacrifice of Jesus. But we have to come face to face with our own sin in order to truly understand and appreciate what Jesus has done for us, the one who came to save us and to give us eternal life. 
there must be a recognition that we are not perfect people. I'm going to share with you a a very embarrassing story um, in my life. So I probably have your attention, at least at this point. You see, when I was a teenager and in college, my home church would produce and and put together a drive-through passion play. I know that probably sounds kind of hokey, but it was, it was actually kind of cool. Um, we had designed and built and staged some of the most pivotal moments in Jesus' life, especially the last week of his life. And as you can imagine, we had various scenes that would depict Jesus in ministry and healing people. There was a scene of the Last Supper, a scene of the crucifixion, and even the resurrection. And cars would drive through and stop at each scene and live actors would act out this scene. We had recorded narration with background music to accompany each scene. Well, one year I was put in charge of the crucifixion scene. It was the most intense and emotional scenes of the entire drive-through, as you would imagine. We had special lighting, even a smoke machine, uh, three live actors on crosses and soldiers and guards. Well, this one year in particular, we updated our narration and our background music. And we had everything on CDs. Remember those little round things that we used to play music with? We had them all on CDs, but we did not have the updated version until right before the first show. You see, I had to to test out our fancy sound system, which was just a little tiny boom box. Um, Since I didn't have that new CD, I needed something to test it out. So I went to my car and I grabbed the first CD I could find. I grabbed it put it in the boom box, hit play, everything worked perfectly and we were good to go. Well, a little bit of time passed that day and it was time for the first set of cars to start driving through. Well, they made their way through all the various scenes and finally they got to our scene, the crucifixion scene. They pulled up to the scene, all the actors were in place, the lighting and the smoke machine were ready to go. I was sitting backstage where nobody could see me so I could operate the fancy sound system, the boom box. Well, the car stopped, the engines turned off and they were ready for the scene. I hit the play button on the boom box and at that moment I realized that I had made a massive mistake. You see, I forgot to swap out the CDs. Instead of getting the updated narration CD, I I left the CD in the boom box that I had grabbed from my car. Uh, I know you're dying to know what that CD was, aren't you? Well, I hit the play button and this is what played. If going to the bathroom in the middle of the night involves shoes and a flashlight, You might be a redneck. You see, here we were depicting one of the most sacred moments in all of history. And what these cars received was a redneck joke. Now, as, as I reflect back on this, I realize that this was an extremely embarrassing moment at that time. And if I'm honest, it's still embarrassing. Well, I tell you that story because we all have moments in our lives that remind us that we are not perfect people. We mess up, whether we mess up intentionally or not, whether it's an honest mistake or an intentional sin. We've all done it and we all still do it. Honestly, it's one of the greatest things we have in common, that we're not perfect people. Well, if anyone in Scripture knew about sin, it was Paul. You see, here we have one of the most influential apostles of all time, who previously was a persecutor of Christ and those who followed Christ. But if anyone in Scripture knew about grace and mercy, again, it was Paul. In his writings and his teachings, we see and hear Paul trying to convince others to follow Christ, to leave their past behind, and to follow Jesus. 
See, in addition to this, Paul was not afraid to tackle touchy and difficult subjects. And that brings us to today's scripture reading. But before I read today's scripture lesson, I have more good news and more bad news. See, the good news is this. In today's passage, we find some of the most pivotal theological writings in all of history. But the bad news is, it's also some of the most confusing. So what I've chosen to do today is rather than read from one of our typical translations, the NIV or the NRSV, I'm going to read this passage from the CEV. It's the Contemporary English Version. I think some of the language makes it easier for us to understand and grasp today. So I invite you to hear these words from the Apostle Paul from Romans chapter 5 verses 12 through 19. Adam sinned, and that sin brought death into the world. Now everyone has sinned, and so everyone must die. Sin was in the world before the law came, but no record of sin was kept because there was no law. Yet death still had power over all who lived from the time of Adam to the time of Moses. This happened, though not everyone disobeyed a direct command from God as Adam did. In some ways, Adam is like Christ who came later. But the gift of God's undeserved grace was very different from Adam's sin. That one sin brought death to many others. Yet in an even greater way, Jesus Christ alone brought God's gift of undeserved grace to many people. There's a lot of difference between Adam's sin and God's gift. That one sin led to punishment. But God's gift made it possible for us to be acceptable to him, even though we have sinned many times. Death ruled like a king because Adam had sinned. But that cannot compare with what Jesus Christ has done. God has treated us with undeserved grace and has accepted us because of Jesus. And so we will live and rule like kings. Everyone was going to be punished because Adam sinned. But because of the good thing that Christ has done, God accepts us and gives us the gift of life. Adam disobeyed God and caused many others to be sinners. But Jesus obeyed him and will make many people acceptable to God. We give thanks to God for the reading of his most holy word. Now, I think Paul is telling us that he has some good news and some bad news for us. If we were to sum up today's passage, it it might sound something like this. The bad news is, by the sin of one man, Adam, we all became sinners. And this sin separated us from God. But the good news is, through the sacrifice and the righteousness of one man, Jesus, we are made righteous and our relationship with God is restored. In in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 21, Paul says this, For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. Now we could get really bogged down in the details of this particular passage. And honestly, we could probably ask more questions of this particular passage than we would have answers for. But here's here's what I feel are the highlights of this passage for us today. Adam, who's often referred to as the father of all humanity, represents sin and disobedience, judgment, and ultimately death. But Jesus represents grace, mercy, obedience, and ultimately life. Christ's gift of salvation and eternal life is so much more powerful than Adam's sin and the effect that it had on all of humanity, resulting in our nature to sin. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, that was Adam. Why are we clumped into the same category as the guy who started this whole sin thing? 
Why am I guilty because of what some guy did thousands of years ago? It's not fair that we all have to suffer because of Adam's sin. Well, maybe it's not fair. But the fact is that we are all prone to sin. And we all fall short of the glory of God. And because of this, we don't need fairness. We need God's mercy. See, mercy is when God doesn't give us what we deserve. But we also need God's grace. See, grace is when God gives us what we don't deserve. Uh, there's a thought and practice in the Jewish tradition of what is known as solidarity. And what that means is that we're not so much viewed as individuals, but we're viewed as a part of a group, uh, part of a, a family or a part of a tribe. In some societies and traditions, when, when someone asks you your name, you don't give them your individual name. You give them the name of your family or the name of your tribe. And along these lines, Paul this is how Paul views Adam. To Paul, Adam represents all of humanity. So when Paul talks about Adam's sin, he's referring to all of our sins, not just Adam. Adam's sin is the sin of us all, and the result and the consequence of our sin is death. But in the same light as our solidarity with Adam, Paul is saying that we have solidarity with Jesus. The theologian William Barclay, he writes, Paul's triumphant argument is that as all humanity was in solidarity with Adam and was therefore condemned to death, so human beings are in solidarity with Christ and are therefore acquitted and given the gift of life. Now, we could go down lots of rabbit holes with this passage, but, but here is Paul's main point. By nature of being a human being, we sin. And the result and the consequence of our sin is death. But, but God loved us and loves us so much to let that be the end of our story. God sent us Jesus so that the grip and the power that sin has on us will not be the last word. You see, God's grace and mercy in the person, in the ministry, in the sacrifice of Jesus has the ultimate victory. And now, as God's children, we are associated with Jesus Christ, and we are heirs of life eternal. So it it's good to dive into these theological truths and to be able to unpack them just a little bit. But what does it mean for us? This is nice, Paul, in your writing, but what does it mean for us in the 21st century? How can we live out this theological truth in our lives? Well, I, I, I want to suggest that we respond in several ways to God's love because of our solidarity with Christ. The first thing is let's live our lives in gratitude. You see, God went to extreme lengths to prove his love for us. And, and our response should be that of gratitude, not entitlement. I don't know about you, but I take so much for granted. The fact that I don't have to think about the breath in my lungs. The fact that I don't have to even ask for most of the things that I need for me and my life. The fact that we get to be a part of a faith-filled community without persecution and punishment. You see, we have so much to be thankful for. And one of the greatest ways that we can live a grateful life is to give thanks to God through our consistency and regularity in worship. It's one of the ways that we can say thank you, God, in our lives. So live our lives in gratitude. Another way is to find ways to express our love for God for this incredible gift. 
during this Lenten season, maybe God's calling you to, to go a little bit deeper in your faith. Maybe to, to go deeper in your Bible study or devotional life or, or your prayer life. Maybe even join a Sunday school class or a small group or a Bible study. If you're looking for a daily devotional, we have those here at the church. You're more than welcome to stop by and grab one of those. You, you see, we're also offering a Wednesday night Lenten devotional series. On Wednesday evenings, you can come in person and experience um, teaching and, and diving into God's word to see what God has to say to us in this Lenten season. How can we intentionally seek after God by spending more time with God during the season? You see, uh, another way for us to live in our solidarity with Jesus is to to find ways to tell others about this incredible love found in Jesus. If Jesus has made a difference in your life, how are you telling others about this difference? How can you share lo God's love with others? Not just through your words, but through your actions as well. You see this next week and through the month of March, is our missions focus, serving side by side. We have a variety of opportunities for you to be able to express your love to God and to others. We encourage you to, to check out the bulletin and also the website to see the various opportunities that we will have to serve side by side and to share God's love with others. You see, I think the psalmist put it well when he said, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So this is, this is what Lent is all about. So I have good news for you and I have great news for you as we close. The good news is we no longer have to place ourselves in the camp of sin and despair because Jesus leads us in the way everlasting. And the great news is Christ came that we might identify and find ourselves in a new tribe. A tribe whose goal is to restore goodness to this earth and in life. And as Christians, as Christ followers, We've taken Jesus' name and we belong to something so much greater than any one of us individually, the body of Christ. So let's claim our name. Let's claim our tribe in Christ in solidarity. And let's change the world by sharing the good news. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for your love and your sacrifice that was exhibited in Jesus Christ. As we enter and walk through this Lenten season, God, may it change us. May we seek more of you in our lives. May we live lives of gratitude. May we find ways, God, to, to express your love to others. And God, may we find ways to love you more in our own lives. Thank you for the ways that you mold us and the ways that you teach us. May we truly be changed people because of your presence and your spirit in our lives. We love you and we praise you. All in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week.
Hi, thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.